Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hall. I'll be your instructor for biology. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't already have this installed in your device, I would like you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Now, exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams. Exams such as the UTME, the post-UTME, WIAC, GCE, IGMB, KCPE, JUPEB, Calbepedia. In the junior sections, we also have the BECE, we have the JSCE, and so much more. Now, you can download the app from www.examguide.com or you visit the Google Play Store to download. Now please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update yourselves on new videos that will be coming up. Now if you're ready for this class, let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at transport system. Um, this is immediately after discussing digestive system. So in this particular topic on transport system, there are subtopics we are going to be looking at in this topic. Actually, transport system, um, topic on transport system is actually very vast. And so we will be breaking this particular to topic into groups or sections, okay? Um, for this particular section, which is one, transport system one, we will be looking at a lot of things. First of all, we're going to discuss definition of transport system. We're going to be looking at the definition of transport system. Next thing we're going to be looking at is the need for transportation in living organisms. The need for transportation in living organisms. We're also going to be discussing diffusion and osmosis as also processes in transportation of essential materials in living things. We are going to be looking at the processes involved, that is osmosis and diffusion. We're going to be discussing materials transported in both plants and also in animals. We are also going to be looking at media of transportation, the medium or media, since it has to do with more than one, uh, media of transportation in living organisms. And then also we're going to be discussing mechanisms of transportation in some organisms, mechanisms of transportation in some organisms. Now, by the end of this particular class, you are actually expected to um, evaluate yourself and these are the things you are expected to know at the end of this lesson. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define transport system, be able to define transport system. Number two, you should be able to briefly explain the processes involved during transportation. There are several processes involved. Like I told you, we're going to be talking about diffusion. We're also going to be looking at osmosis as processes that are involved during transportation of essential materials in living organisms. And number three, we're also going to be looking at, you should be able to mention some needs for transport, for, for some needs for a transport system. And number four, you should be able to mention some materials transported in both plants as well as in animals. And also you're supposed to be able to mention the media of transportation in living organisms and finally describe the mechanisms of transportation in paramecium as well as in tapeworm. These are lower organisms, okay? So if you are set, I'd like us to begin in this note looking at the definition of transport system or you can call it the definition of transportation. Now what we mean transport system in biology, we're not talking about means of carrying um, uh, uh, goods and services or people from one place to another. No, in this respect it is somehow similar. Uh, transportation has to do with movement of essential or goods and services, but in terms of biology, it has to do with the movement of essential materials. And we're going to be looking at some of these essential materials. Therefore, the definition 
for transportation is simply the movement of essential materials from some part of the body to other parts of the body. That's what transportation is all about. The movement of some materials, of essential materials, from some part of the body to other parts of the body. Now, if we include transport system, remember what a system is. Systems are groups of um, similar organs which carries out a particular function. So if we put them together as transport system, it therefore can, can be defined, or transport system can therefore be defined as um, a system that involves groups of organs that perform the functions of moving essential materials from some part of the body to other parts of the body. I don't know if you get that. But it has to do, when we're talk, talking about transport system, we're looking at all the organs that are involved in carrying out the movement of essential materials from one part of the body to another part of the body. So this is the proper definition for transport system as it regards biology. Now the next thing to take note of is the processes that are involved during transportation or that are involved in transport system. Now remember transport system, please take note rather, transport system occurs both in plants and it occurs both in animals. It can be carried out both in plants and animals. Now there is always a common and significant process that is being observed during or that has been observed when transportation is being carried out both in plants and also in animals. Now these two processes are referred to as diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion and osmosis. So let's look at what is actually diffusion and also what is actually osmosis. Now diffusion can be defined as the process by which um, uh, molecules or ions move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until they are evenly distributed. I repeat that again. I said it is a process by which molecules or ions move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until it is evenly distributed. Now I can give you an example of um, or an illustration of what diffusion is all about. Now you can get to a part, you can be in a particular room and at one corner of the room spray a very pungent perfume. Now if you spray that particular perfume at one corner of the room and then you move to or you, someone else is also standing at another corner of the room and probably the four corners of the room, let's say people are also strategically standing there. Now what you will discover that um, that point or that corner of the room where the um, um, pungent perfume was being sprayed will begin to spread, okay? to the extent that every other person that is at the corners of that particular room will get the feel of that particular perfume. It means it has been evenly distributed. And you can see that the perfume or those molecules of the perfume, they are moving from a region of higher concentration where it is being sprayed to a region of lower concentration, which are the other corners of the room where the spray was not made until it is evenly what distributed. That means all corners of the room have the same effect and the same feel or smell of the, uh, of the pungent perfume. That is a description of, um, of diffusion. Another description or experimental de demonstration of diffusion is to take probably an ink. If I say you should get potassium permanganate, that might also be um, a big problem. But you can use an ink and make, get a clear glass of water, uh, then sort of like put few drops of the ink on that water. Do not stare, do not shake it. Allow it for some time. Now, after some minutes or after hours rather, 
you will discover that the ink will completely spread. It will spread until it is evenly spread all over the uh, water, okay? Because initially when you put a drop, you only see the concentration high in that particular place where the drop is being placed. But as time goes on, it, you're beginning to see that it begins to spread. It spreads to the point where um, um, the whole cup of water is filled with the color of the ink. That is also another experimental demonstration of what diffusion is all about. Now, you can see it on the screen, movement of water molecules from, or sorry, molecules rather, or ions from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until it is evenly distributed. Now, what are some of the importance of diffusion in living organisms? How does it play a major role? In living organisms. Now diffusion plays a major role in the intake of oxygen and nutrients from the mother to the fetus through the placenta. It means that the whatever the mother takes in, mostly food, uh, digested food nutrients, and even oxygen that the mother breathes gets to the child not through the uh, not through uh, like say fluids, no, it diffuses it moves from the region of higher concentration which is in the mother and then enters into the child where it is of lower concentration until there is an even distribution of oxygen as well as nutrients now another example or importance of diffusion in living organisms is in the movement of oxygen into the lungs and then the movement of carbon dioxide or carbon four oxide out from the lungs. We call that in biology gaseous exchange during respiration. So during respiration, gaseous exchange is made possible by diffusion. Another place, another importance of diffusion in living organisms is gaseous exchange during photosynthesis. Now during photosynthesis, you can agree with me that oxygen is being expelled out of the plant and then carbon dioxide is being used up by the plant. So the exchange of these gases is also possible by the process of diffusion. And then finally, water vapor leaving the leaves of the plant during what we call transpiration. Most times plants give off or release or lose excess water in the plant through the leaves. We call that transpiration. Now transpiration is also possible by the process of diffusion. Now you can see the importance of diffusion. Also in the movement, another importance of diffusion is also in the movement of digested food from the small intestine into the blood before it is being carried. So you'll see that diffusion plays a major role in transportation of digested food, oxygen, and so many other things from one point of the body to another point or part of the body. Now, what are the factors that affect the rate of diffusion? Now, there are several factors that can affect diffusion. One of them is called temperature. And it simply means that the higher the temperature of a given place, the higher the rate of diffusion. So diffusion is, will I say, directly proportional to the um, amount of or to the level of temperature in that particular place. Number two is the size of the molecule. The smaller the size of the molecule, the faster the rate of diffusion. Number three factor that affects the rate of diffusion is state of matter. State of matter. You can also do this practically on your own. Practically on your own. You will discover that um, diffusion is faster in gases compared to that of what? Liquids. It is faster in gases. Remember we just discussed a demonstration using perfume on at at one corner of a room and then spray it, check the time frame, check the time frame. You will discover and also compare it with the experiment or the practicals or demonstration of dropping um, ink 
into a clear glass and allowing it for some time. If you check the duration between these two experiments, you will discover that um, the, the rate of diffusion is faster in gases because the spraying of the perfume can be referred to as a gaseous effect. And then the um, 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 or, uh, ink on water or in water is also liquid. So you will discover that the rate of diffusion in gases is actually faster compared to the rate of diffusion in liquids. And then lastly is the difference in concentration. Difference in concentration. The higher the difference in concentration, the, uh, the faster the rate of diffusion. That means if we have a, 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 a concentration in which one of the concentration is very high and the other one is very low, that is there is a big difference between these two con uh, uh, concentration, you will find out that the rate of diffusion will be faster compared to when the difference in con concentration is very low or slim, okay? Now, these are some of the factors that affect the rate of diffusion. Now, the second process we actually talked about and I told you about is osmosis. Now, osmosis is also another process through which um, essential materials are moved from one part of the body to another part of the body. Now, what is osmosis? Osmosis can simply be defined as the process by which um, the process by which water molecules move from a region of lower concentration. Please note the difference between diffusion and osmosis. In diffusion, um, molecules or ions move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. But in terms of osmosis, these one, water molecules move from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through a semi-permeable membrane through a semi-permeable membrane. So you see that in terms of osmosis, it involves water molecules only, water molecules only. For instance, I'll give you an example or an importance of osmosis, but let's see, one importance of osmosis is, is the movement of water and mineral salts from the soil to the roots and from, from the roots passing down to the leaves. So it has to do with the movement of water molecules from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through a semi-permeable membrane, through a semi-permeable membrane. Osmosis is also very important, like I said, in transport system. Now, uh, we have a, a practical demonstration of osmosis. Now, one thing you'll do in terms of osmosis, get two tubers of yam or get a tuber of yam cut them into rectangular shapes, okay? Now, each of those tubers that you have cut into rectangular shapes, ensure that you make a cup shape out of each of them. Let them look like cups, okay? Make a hollow in each of those um, tubers of yam. Label one A and label the other one B. Also, get a trough of water, a very clear trough of water. Get two clear troughs of water. Then in one of the, okay, let's call um, uh, the yam tuba A, fill it with sugar solution, not to the brim, at least half of it, and then put it in, this, um, in the trough containing water, not filled to the brim, also half, and put it there. But also, please take note, the part, the, the mark where you have the water filled to, make a mark on it. The same thing again, on the, um, on the yam tuba A, make a mark where you have the sugar solution, where it reaches, okay? And then do the same experiment or the same setup for tube B. But in yam, in yam tuba B, do not put any salt solution, just put water solution to the same level as that of yam tuba A. Now, once you do that, put them in the same setup, which is a trough of water, 
please make a mark on where the level of the water is and also make a mark of the level of the water and sugar solution on the yam tubers we have. Now, when you allow this setup to, to stand for hours, you will discover that water in setup A moves from the trough and enters into the yam tuber A. How do we notice this? You will see is an increase in the water level inside the yam tuber A. That means the sugar solution will increase in size. It will be higher than the markings you have made. Then when you check the trough in setup A, where the yam tuber A is in, when you check the, the, the water trough, you will also discover that the, water, the, world, the level of water has also dropped, it has reduced. So you can see that water molecules have moved from the trough into the sugar solution, moving from a lower concentration to a region of what? Higher concentration. And then also, because the sugar solution is a concentration that is very high, okay, a strong solution. Then if in setup B, nothing will happen. The, the, the water molecules still have the same level. They are still at the same level. Nothing happened to it. The reason is simple. The uh, uh, concentration in the water trough and the concentration in the yam tuber B, they, they are isotonic. There is no di much difference. There is no difference. So there is no movement because difference in concentration is not actually high. All right? So that is a better demonstration of osmosis occurring in living tissues. Now, what are some of the importance of osmosis? Number one, it aids the absorption of water and mineral salts, I told you this, from the soil to the roots in plants. It also aids movement of water from one cell to another in both plants and animals. Number three is that it aids the opening and the closing of the stomata when guard cells take in or lose water. And then number four, it helps cells of both plants and animals to be what? Turgid. That is talking about turgidity of cells in both plants and animals. So these are the importance of osmosis. But what are the conditions for which osmosis must occur? There must be, number one is that there must be a presence of a strong solution. Now, this strong solution, we can call it hypertonic solution. An example of a strong solution is the one we just talked about. Uh, an example is the sugar solution. You can also have a salt solution. These are strong solution or hypertonic solution. Number two um, conditions necessary for osmosis to occur is the presence of a weak solution. We can also call that a hypotonic solution. An example of a hypotonic solution is distilled water. And then finally, number three condition necessary for osmosis to occur is that there must be a presence of a semi-permeable membrane. Now, we have several examples of semi-permeable membrane. We've just talked about one in our demonstration of osmosis, and we said it is the yam tuber. Yam tuber is an example of a semi-permeable membrane. We have cell membrane, that is the membrane found in every cell, both plant and animal cell. These are also examples of semi-permeable membrane. We also have the pig bladder. The pig bladder, we also have another example, the cellophane paper. So these are some of the examples of a semi-permeable membrane. Now, why do we need a transport system? What is the importance of transportation in living organisms? Why? The need. Needs for transportation. Now, one of the needs for transportation is that transportation or the transport system is necessary for the movement of essential materials. In our definition, we looked at what, uh, we looked at this and we said that it is essential. Sorry, it is the movement of essential materials. So, um, and one of the need for transportation is to move essential materials such as oxygen, we have digested food and so on. These are essential materials to move them from one place, one part of the body to other parts of the body. Another uh, uh, need for transportation is that it helps, in, it is necessary rather, for the removal of metabolic waste products 
from the body. Remember, if these metabolic waste pro products are left inside of the body, they become toxic to the body. So in order to remove these toxins or these toxic materials or metabolic waste products, Need, there is a need for transportation, a need to move them from where they are produced to where they are removed out from the body. And then also number three reason or need for transports for a transport system is that it is necessary in plants for the movement of water and mineral salts from the roots to the stems and as well as to the leaves. Of course, you know the water and mineral salts are essential for photosynthesis to actually occur. And number four is that it is necessary for the movement of hormones, hormones and enzymes and even antibodies, you can imagine. So it is so important. Enzymes, antibodies, of course, you know, antibodies helps to keep us safe. They are like soldiers to keep us safe. The enzymes help, helps in me metabolic processes as well as hormones. So the necessary movement of these uh, essential mat materials or substances from one part of our body, mostly from the place of production to the place where they are required, transport system must be in place in both living organisms, in both plants and what animals. Right now, let's look at materials that are being transported in plants. We said that transportation takes place in both plants and also in animals. So let's see what and what what are the things that are actually transported in plants. One of the things transported in plants is oxygen. Oxygen. Now, the the oxygen actually is transported from the lungs, which is where it is being stored when it comes into the body it is being stored temporarily in the lungs that is the air sacs which is called the alveoli it is stored there temporarily and the blood helps to move it or it is then moved from the lungs to other cells or to all the cells of the body for respiration to take place of course you know that respiration like we said is the oxidation of food substances by series of chemical reactions which are controlled by enzymes in order to release energy and this energy is used to carry out metabolic activities very important so how does this oxygen or how is these ox oxygen carried from one place which is where they are stored in the lungs to other cells of the body that is where transportation comes in okay so one of the materials being transported 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 in animals is actually oxygen another um, material essential material transported in animals is carbon dioxide and other waste product now carbon dioxide is actually transported from the cells and even waste products are transported from the cells to other parts of the body where they are removed. Now, why are they transported from the cells? It is from the cells they are produced. They are byproducts, waste products. You can call them metabolic waste. So they are produced by the cells. So they, they are moved from that place of production to where they are removed out of the body. Remember I said, if these wastes are allowed to remain in the body, they become very toxic. To the body system. Examples of some of the waste products apart from carbon four oxide that is being removed from the body, it includes we have this urea, we have uric acid, we have salts. Excess salt also is not good in the body. We also have excess water. Other um, materials that are removed or that are being transported in animals include digested food digested food if you look at our videos on digestion or digestive process we talked about uh, processes through which digestion takes place in man and we said that in the small intestine digestion is completed in the small intestine now when digestion is completed in the small intestine it has to be moved from where it is to other parts of the bodies mostly to the cells which needs it to provide energy for growth, repair one out tissues of the body and build up the body and so many other things cells make use of from these nutrients, okay, or from this digested food. So they are actually transported from the small intestine to the cells, okay. Digested food is also another material being transported. Now another material being transported includes hormones, 
includes enzymes as well as antibodies, okay? Now, in plants, what are the materials being transported in plants? In plants, materials that are being transported includes manufactured food. Remember, and take, remember uh, if you check our videos on um, um, photosynthesis, which is plant nutrition, we mentioned that food is being manufactured at the leaves of plants, in the leaves of plants. That is where um, food, manufacturing of food takes place. So plants need to feed. So how is these or are these manufactured food moved from the leaves to the stems, to the roots and other parts of the plants for nutrition and respiration and storage? It is through transport system. So one of the materials being transported in plants is manufactured food. Another material being transported in plants include water and mineral salts. And when we're looking at mineral salts, essential mineral salts include the nitrates and the phosphates. They are being transported from the roots to the stems and to the leaves mostly for photosynthesis to actually occur. Other materials being transported in plants include excretory products. And these excretory products are actually nitrogenous waste. They are being transported from the cells to parts of the body of the plants, okay, where they are actually removed. And also, another part of material that is being excreted out of plants, or sorry, that is being transported, includes the hormones, okay? So these are some of the materials that are being transported in plants. Next to look at is media of transportation. Now, when we're talking about the media of transportation, we're looking at materials that aid the transportation of these essential materials. Materials or substances that aid the transportation of these essential materials. Okay? Now, in terms of unicellular organisms, the medium of transportation in unicellular organisms is the cytoplasm, the cytoplasm. Then also in plants, in plants, the medium of transportation is the latex. We're going to talk about that much later when we start looking at transport system in plants. But it is the latex. Now, the latex is actually the white substance you see w when you cut some plants, not all trees, but some trees, you see what we call the cell sap. Now, these cell sap, they aid the transportation of water and mineral salts from the soil through the, uh, through the roots, hairs, to other parts of the plants. So that is the latex. But in terms of animals, in animals, we have two types of media of transportation. We have the first one, which we call the blood. You know the blood. Now, the blood is a media of transportation, mostly in vertebrates. We're going to be looking at the blood much more later. Mostly in vertebrates. It transports oxygen, digested food, antibodies, hormones, enzymes, excretory products, and so many other things that the blood helps also to transport. Another uh, media or medium of transportation in animals is the lymph. The lymph. Now, the lymph plays also a major role in defense. We're going to be looking at that also in our, our subsequent classes or, yes, our subsequent classes of presentation. But please take note, in unicellular organism, it is the cytoplasm. In plants, the medium of uh, transportation is actually the latex. And then in animals, the medium of transportation or media of transportation is the blood as well as the lymph, okay? Now, finally, let's take a look at mechanisms of transportation in some organisms, mostly unicellular organisms. We're going to start with unicellular organisms, and then we'll talk about a lower multicellular organism. We're just going to pick one or two of them. And in terms of unicellular organisms, the continuous, mostly transportation in unicellular organism is based on continuous streaming movement of the cytoplasm. The continuous streaming or circulatory movement of the cytoplasm brings about the movement of materials within the cell. Now, an example is seen in paramecium. Now, in paramecium, we observe the continuous circular movement of the cytoplasm. This 
continuous movement of the uh, continuous circular movement of the cytoplasm brings about the distribution of materials distribution of materials and these materials include food we also have oxygen we have carbon dioxide and so many others the distribution is taking place within the cells within the cells of the organism like i said it is brought about by the by the continuous circulation or circular movement of the cytoplasm remember we also said that the medium of um medium of transportation in in, in unicellular organism is actually the cytoplasm the cytoplasm now also, in a multicellular organism, we're picking a lower or simple multicellular organism. We're looking at tapeworm. Now, the tapeworm has guts that are branched and extend throughout all the bodies. Now, this helps the tapeworm to, to, to sufficiently um, diffuse food and, other, uh, food and even oxygen into all body cells. Into all body cells. So, this branching of the guts and that extends throughout all the bodies of the um, tapeworm aids in what transportation it aids in transportation now this brings us to the end on this particular lesson or class of transport system one in this class we have talked about a lot of things we have looked at the definition of transport system we've also discussed um, 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 processes that are involved during transportation. We discussed diffusion as a process. We also talked about osmosis as the process that is involved during transportation. We looked at the need for a transport system. What are the needs for transport system? We also discussed um, uh, materials that are being transported both in plants as well as in animals and then we looked at the medium or media of transportation in living organisms and finally we talked about mechanism of transportation as seen in some organisms and we picked a unicellular organism and one also multicellular organism now before we go let's take a look at some evaluation questions now look at this particular question question one says the following are transported in animals except the following are transported in animals except remember we've talked about materials that are being transported in animals look at these options a urea b carbon four oxide c oxines d enzymes the correct answer is not urea urea is a material i told you is an excretory waste or a metabolic waste being transported carbon dioxide or carbon four oxide is also transported in um, animals enzymes are also transported in animals auxins yes auxins are hormones but they are not animal hormones they are actually plant hormones so auxin is the option that is not transported in in animals number two questions by which of the following which of the following rather is a medium of transportation in unicellular organism medium of transportation in unicellular organism is the cytoplasm the cytoplasm and number three the movement of oxygen into the lungs and the movement of carbon dioxide oxide out from the lungs that is gaseous exchange during respiration is carried out by what process is carried out by what process is it diffusion is it osmosis is it plasmolysis is it flaccidity now plasmolysis and flaccidity are out of the question we did not discuss anything that has to do with flaccid flaccidity and plasmolysis but if you look at the options a and b now if you look at a or if you look at b remember the definition for osmosis we said water molecules only now the question we have there is not water but gaseous molecules so the correct option to this question is actually a diffusion thank you for participating in today's class you can practice more questions using your exam guide app the app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test you can also learn particular topics of interest with different modes like study mode, uh, mock mode, and even practice mode. 
it is also it also has other features that makes learning very fun now it is a must for all serious students download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet see you in the next class don't forget to subscribe to our channels hit the notific notification bell and share the videos to your loved ones and friends that will benefit from it bye for now